What is going on guys? Blink here, back with a new guide. We'll be talking about having better chances of winning 1v2 fights. Also, the V-Bucks giveaway is still going on, so make sure to visit the link in the description to enter. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications as I post an Amazon gift card code in the comments every time I upload. By turning on notifications, you'll have a way better chance of getting here first and redeeming that code. Anyways guys, let's get to the guide. In this situation, these players were outside the circle and I tried taking advantage of the situation. Now, if it's a 1v2, I could have left and built a fort on the mountain, but I'll be showing you guys ways to win more fights by playing aggressive against two players. So I tried getting in some damage with the deagle and you want to try shooting in the next spot They'll most likely be exposed which would be the end of the wall You might be able to squeeze in some shots before they place another wall down But unfortunately it wasn't possible So I went for the push because I don't want these players to heal They ended up taking some damage from the storm and my best chance would be to make the push on them Use those stairs for cover and see if you can squeeze in some shots from the tight angles your opponents are peeking They ended up not building quick enough and I was able to eliminate both of them The first player I downed never even built to stop my shots and the last player built very inefficiently built ramp without adding walls and roofs which expose his whole body the whole way through. So in this example I decided to play without a skin and ended up gathering some great examples. I do the no skin to get more engagements because players like to engage no skins more than skin players which is pretty true as I do it myself. So my teammate ends up dying since he went a little too far off for me which resulted in getting eliminated. Now it's time to try to clutch this out. Having a sniper will make your 1v2s much easier. The first thing I did was grab the high ground because on a 1v2 you never want to be below your opponents. Having the height advantage allows me to spot my opponents without peeking out. Now, you never want to focus on one player. I actually tried tagging up one of my opponents and I got shot back, which I then responded with a sniper shot and knocked down one player. And I'm able to win the 1v1 pretty easily. Now, let's break down this super quick. So in 1v2 fights, sometimes one of the opponent's teammates will keep himself peeked out without moving to just get a few AR shots off or a sniper shot off. Since you're fighting his friend, that opponent doesn't think you're a threat because you're not paying attention to him. This is why I said having the high ground is super important. You try fighting one of the opponents as you use the third person peeking advantage to spot the other opponent. He thinks you're still focused on his friend and that's when you pull out the sniper for an easy shot to the head. When you have a sniper, look for those opponents that stand still in 1v2s. Your objective is to knock him down with a sniper shot. If he never went down, I could have pushed him or just focused on the player I'm currently fighting because most likely the player I sniped is healing. So in a 1v2, you never want to be running around too much. You want to set that fort up in the middle of the circle and spot for opponents without exposing yourself. You'll have a better chance of winning fights when you already have your fort set up because you have the support of your fort for cover and you're above all your opponents for the time being until they start building stairs to towards you, which you can tag them up before they get close and have a better chance of winning your fight. So I end up getting shot by rockets by a team below. Took shots as I made sure to rebuild my fort. Those rockets aren't much of a threat as long as you rebuild. I did end up getting shot by a John Wick across the map and managed to knock him down. I ended up pushing and you guys might be wondering, well Blink, why are you giving up your circle positioning? You're in a good spot and you still have opponents below you. Well, the John Wick seemed better than my opponents below. When you knock down opponents that seem better, take advantage of the 1v1 because if I allowed the John Wick to get revived, then I might not get the same chance to snipe him again. You want to dissect which teams seem like they would be harder to fight in a 1v2. I'll show you why I went for the John Wick. First, he had a skin. Usually when you have a skin, you're more dedicated towards the game. You probably played enough to decide you're going to play this game a lot and you might as well buy a skin. Now, this isn't always the case. Don't think every player with cosmetics is automatically the next ninja. Some players don't want to spend money on the game and can still be very good. Cosmetics don't give you any boost, but throughout my time playing, I've noticed players with skins perform better. Alright, so the next way I spotted the differences was the movement of the players below. I scoped in on this player and she was walking and she was walking sideways. You never want to walk and you never want to walk in weird patterns. By adding in a jump as you run every few seconds, that already makes it seem like you have a good knowledge towards the game. Now, I'm not sure how good the rocket player was, but I knew that one of them wasn't that good, which would make my 1v2 much easier. So that's the reason why I pushed the John Wick. Now, when I jump out, I landed on the ramp instead of the inside of their fort. You never want to land inside the fort because you can't build to protect yourself and you might give the other opponent an easy shot to hit. It's just very unfair knowing what can happen when you land inside a fort. You can't really control the fight the way you want to. I landed on the ramp and started a build off and almost had an edit kill, but instead we actually both got our whole platforms destroyed. But if I built one more story higher or got hit by my opponent, then I think I would have been eliminated. Fortunately, my opponent got eliminated because of the little bit of damage I was able to deal and she was a little bit higher than me. This is why you can't keep building and building. You want to analyze and try to squeeze in some damage onto your opponent. If she had 100 HP, maybe she would have lived, but the damage I dealt was enough for the elimination. So I was at 50 HP and boxed myself in super quick to get a heal off before the last opponents found me. Gotta try getting off as much healing as you can before the last 1v2. Spotted them up ahead and when they got super close I built myself a little fort. Where they messed up was not building at all. If your opponents aren't building 
then that's an easy 1v2. All you have to do is pre-line up your crosshair and take shots because they don't know when you peek out since they have the low ground and you have the third person peeking advantage. So make sure you guys get the building down right. The high ground is super important because of the extra features you get from it. Well, that's it for this guide. Hope you guys have learned something new and a like and a sub would be greatly appreciated as it does help me out a lot. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day or night and I'll see you on the next one.